What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Dead Noise. I'm Chris, and with me today, thanks to the power of Zoom, is a familiar face. It is, once again, Nate Sell from the band Mirror Cell. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on again. Of course. This is this is going to be a fun one. It's the first interview of the year. Um, I'm excited. Dude, well, I am honored. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> I love chatting with you, so this is, this is going to be fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So last time we talked, we were talking about your new single, Drown Me, and now you have another new single out. It's called Dissolve. This one is so different. Like, you have... This is your fourth single, I believe, but like they all have their own identity. But this one is just so far off musically in a good way. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious as to how you how that song came about musically, like what the consensus was and how you guys went about going that direction. Yeah, so I think what it is, is mirror cell as a whole is just inspired by so many different uh genres and styles of music as well as just so many different like aesthetics and art and everything so whenever it comes time to like making new music we just have like an endless pool of ideas and concepts and whatnot that we can try to use for creating songs so that's why at least for our debut so far there's so many different styles of music because we have like we're really inspired by electronic stuff, really inspired by industrial stuff, really inspired by metalcore, hardcore, deathcore. Um, so that's why like we have songs like zombies that are or zombies, zombie. That's like really high paced and like really electronic based, but also like really heavy. And then we have songs like Bleach where there's like shoegazy choruses and just doesn't really make sense. So yeah, with Dissolve, it was like, that was the last song that we had written. Uh, and it was, I don't know, it was just, I would have to give a lot of the credit to Caleb. He's uh, a co-producer with me and same with Ben. And I think we were just like, you know what? Like we're inspired by really groovy, like shoegazy, deftone style stuff. Let's try to do something like in that realm but also like with that mirror cell like style that we're trying to establish. So when it came time to recording that, it was just like, I think it was just like probably the most experimental one. Uh, but it was just an amalgamation of all of our influences and different styles that we just want to kind of like let out there for people to, I guess, understand what mirror cell like really is about if you take 10 seconds at the beginning and then 10 seconds in the middle and 10 seconds at the end, you wouldn't think it's the same song. It sounds different all the way through. Is that something that you guys consciously like did? You wanted to make sure it was just all over the place or did it just sort of happen like that? Yeah. I just think that sonically, like we don't want to just be like one thing we don't want to just like put out a song and it's just like oh yeah that was just a metalcore song like i want people to like listen to us and be like oh shit like there are so many different like influences that i can pick up on uh when listening to this and i think that's like the main goal when it comes to writing like our music like you don't really know what you're gonna get like we could drop like some straight up grindcore shit <laughs> or or we could drop something like really beautiful and elegant sounding with like a lot of like harmonies and uh just melodies and shit so um and i also think like again like giving the flowers where they're due i think caleb is like a really experienced writer but also a very creative writer as well and he can come up with stuff and ideas and make things just work like he he really is like that like just juggernaut of a writer where he can be like you know what we're gonna take this genre of music and this genre of music and it's just gonna sound like the sickest shit in the world might be my own personal take maybe someone else might think <laughs> we sound like shit but um i i just think that he's a really creative writer and whenever we can just get together and like just clash our ideas like we just make it work well, I think it sounds good, if that's any consolation. Appreciate it, man. Um, 
Now, I asked you this when uh, Drown Me came out, so I feel compelled to ask it again with this song. Do you have a favorite line? Um, I I like the I like the truth bends. I think that's really cool because it's about obviously the movie Annihilation, as well as some other elements um, of like stories and whatnot. But I really like that because it's just like such a prominent like lyric that is just like the theme for the entire movie and just really sets the tone for the entire song. I think it's just a really bold, uh, I guess, quote, not quote, but like, you know, lyric from the song. Mm -hmm. When you when you sent me this song, one of the things that you told me was how it was inspired by Annihilation. And that obviously as a horror movie guy that caught my attention pretty quickly. Um, if for people who haven't seen the movie or people who don't know what it's about, could you talk about the lyrical and possible musical inspirations that you brought from that movie into the song? Yeah. So, um, obviously it's a sci-fi cosmic horror, like Lovecraftian style movie. Uh, it's got Natalie Portman in it. Um, should, should you say any more? No, <laughs> go watch it. Um, but no, it's, it's a really good film. It's just like, it has so many themes and elements and just really good storytelling without being like too much on the nose. Like it leaves a lot to like guessing. I could talk about the entire movie, but <laughs> uh, it's, it's just a really good cosmic horror film that touches on themes of like love and loss and betrayal mainly. And then also like self-destruction and whatnot. It just, it has like everything and it it's really emotional uh, but also like really beautiful and uh, just an amazing movie. I would say like if you have ever seen like Arrival or any other like sci-fi horror type movie like that, then you'd really like this one. Um, I'm a big Lovecraftian guy, so I just love the cosmic horror, like all the like creepy, like weird, like hybrid, like animal, like stuff that are that's in it. Um. But uh, yeah, it's a really good film. Um, I would say that it, whenever it came about like writing it, like it was so weird. So I had just watched it and we were like starting the writing process on a new song and Caleb was like, hey, so I have an idea. He was like, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Annihilation, but I just watched it again or something. And he was like, I'd love to like, maybe like write something about this. And I was like, Dude, I literally just watched it last night. I was like, that's so weird. I was like, fuck yeah. And so, um, yeah, a lot of the lyrics are definitely like centered around the themes in the movie. Also around the Greek mythology story of Cephalus and Procris, which is basically like guy thinks he that his wife is cheating or his partner is cheating, ends up killing her, finds out that like she wasn't. I think, I don't know, that was more of like a different concept that was trying to be tied into it but nonetheless they're both similar in themes when it comes to the movie and the story as a horror movie fan i'm really curious like what do you look for in a new release because a lot of people complain like oh there's nothing original anymore but then when something original comes out nobody goes to see it <laughs> um so what is it that like as a fan like interests you in a new movie Oh man, that's a good question. Cause there's like multiple things that interest me when it comes to like new releases. So like shock value is obviously a big one. So like whenever I saw hereditary and saw like Ari Aster's mind and basically um, with like midsummer and all that other stuff, it brought like a whole new realm of horror to my, I guess my disposal where it's like, I really like that like weird artistic like side of like horror where like it's more eerie and more like jarring as opposed to just being like a straight up like slasher film or basic like stuff with like basic tropes um but it, i mean it just has to feel like authentic you know and just has to have like a good like plot and a good story i think is what it is for me because for instance i watched this movie recently called uh i think it's called totally killer mm -hmm it's basically just like back to the future meets an 80s slasher 
and it's like stuff that we've already seen like a million times with like original slasher films and whatnot but it was just like so good and just had like such a good story and the chick from sabrina was in it and stuff like it was just like it, i was just like thoroughly enjoying it the entire time um even though like it's like it borrows a lot from like other movies that have been done similar in the past so i would say that um or have to still like really like shock me because like or have like really good like practical effects and like production and whatnot there's a movie that came out i think in 2019 called the void mm. and it's uh it's like a cosmic horror style film and it just has like the coolest practical effects in it which you don't really see nowadays a lot of stuff is digital um but yeah it just it has to have something like authentic to me to really like make me remember like what you said with evil like when evil lurks like that movie was just like i was thinking about it for days <laughs> after I watched it. yeah i i have three dogs and i didn't want to go near them for a while <laughs> are you like particular about the type of humor that's in horror movies like does it have to be smart like scream or like does it have to or if it's like scary movie or what we do in the shadows or something over the top with humor, it kind of just goes off your radar. Yeah. It can be the dumbest, <laughs> the dumbest of the dumb. Like I, I, if it's horror adjacent in any form, I love it. Like that's, that's just what it is for me. It's my favorite type of movie. Like horror, I should say horror, like the genre is my favorite like type of movies like to watch. And then it would be like sci-fi and stuff like that. So anything like, comedy related i've seen all of what we do in the shadows like the movie and the show um i love the original scary movies um tucker and dale versus evil mm. uh, amazing like just it, it can be like the most it, it it can be highbrow style comedy and i'll like it but it could also be like caveman like humor like style comedy and i'll still love it like i have no particular uh, taste when it comes to that i love how you say caveman style humor too because like i feel like an absolute caveman like i don't know if what oh, the weather's yeah. like scary movie. it's just so like i don't know it's yeah. just i've been watching like the most sophisticated movie i've been watching is godzilla minus one because i can't stop going to the theater for it well i can now that it's out of the theater but like aside from that like i've been watching the most absurd like comedy like on my laptop and stuff lately and with the weather is getting super cold so i've been growing my beard out and i feel like an absolute neanderthal like <laughs> so the fact that you said caveman style humor i'm like yep i know exactly what that is dude i was so sick i couldn't shave either i was like i started feeling good like two days ago and i was like it's finally time to shave like i was <laughs> i was in full like just house druid mode it feels like I'm back in quarantine and I'm not even sick. It's just cold outside. <laughs> it's not here. It just jumped right back to 60s. Oh, really? This has been great. God, I wish. <laughs> now, I've seen a lot of bands kind of... I don't know how to introduce this, but like, I understand that you're a big Misfits fan. Last time we talked, we fangirled about Ice Nine Kills a little bit. They've kind of adopted the horror based song uh style is yeah. that something that you want to start doing with mirasa like write more songs that kind of take inspiration from that side of things or was this like a one-off type of thing oh yeah definitely not a one-off thing it's definitely something i want to do more in the future um like i'm i'm a huge horror fan or just film fan in general and there's just so many different movies and stories that i like books and stuff that i'd love to write about um, so yeah, definitely going to be something that we'll do more in the future. hundred percent. Do you have any ideas off the top of your head? Like what, what movies or what books you might want to consider in the future? Yeah. Um, man, I have a list, uh, a lot of, a <laughs> lot of, uh, hmm, trying to think of like one specifically. Well, you know, what's funny is I feel like mirror cell mirror cells aesthetic really adopts from like the matrix like y2k style mm -hmm. so i feel like it's almost inevitable that we write something within that like with that concept in mind like about like being like in the matrix or 
maybe about like Blade Runner or something. I don't know. I feel like our band has a very like sci-fi aesthetic to it at this time. So I don't know. I remember one of the photos you sent me the first time we talked. It had a bit of a Fight Club vibe to it. I was like, hmm, I wonder if that was intentional or not. Yeah, Fight Club was <laughs> definitely the inspiration because we we made the ski masks and we we're like, oh, I was like, this reminds me of the scene <laughs> where they kidnap the dude in the bathroom and they for like try to cut off his gonads. Uh, <laughs> I was like, we should definitely like do some style like photos in this. And one thing you talked about in our last interview was kind of the mystique of Mirror Cell and how you guys, you're like the only publicly known member of the band in a way. And the your, your, uh, your bandmates are anonymous. And we've seen a lot of bands like Ghost, Slipknot, now Sleep Token. They've kind of adopted that as well. And I know you take a lot of inspiration from those guys too. Is there like a planned reveal at some point with like the first like music video or anything like that or is this kind of where you want to see how long like where it takes you yeah i mean i would say it's it's pretty easy to find out like who we are and everything but a lot of my members like that mysterious type image thing going for them i mean my basis doesn't even have social medias or anything like that so it's uh it's very much like a you know like yeah like i'm here i'm center you know who i am i'm the mirror cell guy um and then the other guys are just like also a part of it but they don't want to be like in that public spotlight like that so um i i definitely think that like with future content like our faces will be a little bit more public um but i think at the same time we're always going to have that mysterious element to us and you'll never really know like if one release will be like super like hey like this is our faces or we're gonna be super like oh like it like very like ominous and i guess uh vague about like who we are as people because i feel like mirror cell like has like two types of personalities when it comes to like our releases like we're either like really like mysterious and vague or we're very like upfront like i guess emotional and personal like with our uh like our vibe or our aesthetic i think that comes through in this new single too like just the musical contrast of it i think that that does a really good job of like showcasing the split not like the split personality but just the duality of your guys's aesthetic and your sonic abilities too so that's that's an interesting point. Now that we're in 2024, what does the year look like for Mirror Cell? <laughs> like, I know it's already February. It, j- it feels like January 35th, but um, yeah. what, what does the year look like for you guys? Uh, a lot of big things coming. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we're, uh, we're really excited about this year. We've already started writing new music and new material that we're really stoked on. Uh, I think our next cycle of songs are going to be like just very um, mirror cell. Like they're going to be, it's going to be us. And we're, we're less discovering who we are and forming our identity and more like making a stamp and a statement of like, this is us. This is what we want to do. Um, so we have a lot of content in mind. Definitely uh, now that we're going to be having all of our songs out, going to be trying to book some shows whether that be locally or just regionally. Um, so definitely can expect that. Um, but yeah, just just working, man, just grinding. We got a lot of really cool stuff that we're excited to show people. And I think because we had so much like with the visualizers and stuff on our previous releases, uh, the next set of releases are going to be very mo- like us. Like it's going to be like, more like less of like the art and visual side of things and more like us and like music video oriented and whatnot that was part of what i was gonna ask next i've noticed how your your music videos are more like visualizers and i think it's really cool because like you said it kind of establishes what your aesthetic uh like what what your aesthetic is and what you kind of want people to take away from that but 
as far as performance videos go, as far as I know, there hasn't been a single with a video like that. So I was wondering if that was in the cards or if you kind of like the mystique of the visualizers more. I Yeah, I love both. I feel like we can convey like what our song is about with both, but we have been saving our music video debut for a special song that we'll be releasing this year. Hmm. We already shot it. It's already filmed, edited and everything. Um, so people can definitely look forward to seeing like an actual mirror cell music video and seeing what we take from all of our visual inspirations and putting it into like a, an actual video with us. So that is definitely on the horizon. Uh, I can't really say when exactly we were going to be releasing that, uh, but, but there will be more to come of that. Like, that's just basically going to be like the starting point for us when it comes to like filming music videos and doing everything with our aesthetic. Have you guys as a group talked about the live show at this point? Like, are there any goals as far as production goes or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, so we, we rehearse, we practice, uh, we have a pretty good setup with, um, our current selection of members, but, uh, we're, we're still working out a couple of things just to make sure that like our first show is like really worth it. And we have like everything that we, we want to bring. Uh, cause like right now we could book like a local show or opening up for like a, a touring band or something, but we just really want to make sure it's right. We want to make sure it's, uh, you know, we're not playing in front of nobody and we're really delivering like the performance and the show that we want to deliver to people. We don't want to just get up there and be some band dudes. Like we really want to like bring our aesthetic and everything that we do like into our live show as well. Um, so, uh, definitely we have like all the resources and what we need. We're just waiting for the right time. Hmm. So at this particular juncture, have you guys already started reaching out to promoters or certain venues in your area? Um, so, yeah, we're I would say like I'm pretty close with a lot of the promoters um, in our area. Um, I haven't necessarily reached out to anybody like I have some contacts and connections with people um, that I could like hit up and like ask, like, hey, can like we put together like our first show and whatnot and we can make it happen. Um, I would say like for us though, it's more so like waiting for the right time. And then we're also going to try to do some stuff with other bands in our area that we're like really close with. Um, so it might not even be in our like specific area. It might just be in our region. Um, so, but yeah, there's, there's definitely been some talks with other bands and then also with, um, like promoters that I know and stuff about, um, getting something together just again it's just waiting for whenever uh, that timing is right that's an interesting point because like with my local scene here we have the the local bands are very tight-knit and like there's a lot of them but they all know each other they all work together um and we have a lot of touring bands that come through here kind of regularly like the band I've seen the most times is from Ashes to New, and I've seen them four times. I've never had I've never had to leave town to see them because they always play here in Jacksonville. Well, um, are they from Jacksonville? No, they're from Pennsylvania. Oh. <laughs> and um, but like on a touring level, there's just some bands that we have here that just always come to this area. And I don't know if it's like that at any places where you are, but are there any local or touring bands that you'd love to work with on stage that just like come to mind? Yeah. Um, I have like a whole like group of local bands and touring bands. So I could answer that question separately for sure. Um, I would say like local bands in our scene, Kansas city is kind of a weird area because we're right in the middle. Um, so our like local scene spans out to st louis uh nebraska um you know just everywhere that our state touches um so but i would say that like locally the bands that we most likely will do stuff with um or try to do stuff with would be our friends in dead seven they're in st louis they're a really good band um our co-producer caleb also works uh with them so if you like our stuff you'll definitely like theirs um another band uh that i will we're pretty close with um that i would like to do stuff with is a band called cohen noise 
Um, I'm really good friends now uh, with their vocalist, Nick. He's a really talented guy. Um, their music's really cool. I feel like they're kind of coming into their like sound now. So if, like they're, they're just a really solid band and they're from Kentucky um, <clears throat> and they just put out a new song that's really good. So those, those two bands for sure. Um, there's like some other bands that I like know that are in our local area. I don't know if they're necessarily like active though. So it makes it kind of hard for me to say that I would want to work with them if they're not even like planning on doing anything, but um, there's a lot of, there's, there's a, a couple of good group of friends, but our scene's kind of dry. So there's not that many people. What um, about on the touring end? Yeah. Oh, dude, I thought about this. <laughs> I have like a reality like tour that like could happen possibly and make sense. And then I have like one that is, would never happen or work because <clears throat> a lot of the artists are dead um that i wish would happen uh but i think for us it would like a sick tour would be us a band called Amurda, really good um if you haven't heard them check out their album hyperviolence it's just insane um and then it would probably be static dress loathe <clears throat> and the plot in you bro <laughs> i just think i think that's like a tour that could happen i feel like and with our sound like that's like like so many of those bands are like direct inspirations when it comes to like everything we do so i think that would be sick oh and a band called from joy them too oh up. that'd be cool that is a super that's a really good lineup like We're just moved, musically so many bands like with like other bands it, it would just be sick what are some of the uh the unrealistic ones with the with the no longer living musicians? Just out of curiosity, like I really want to hear what those are. Dude. Um well, I mean, I'm wearing a kitty shirt. That would be sick. Uh <clears throat> a lot of these bands are either like like way too big or like dead. So like mm -hmm. a big for me that I wish I could not only play with but see would be typo um that would be so sick uh man like Rammstein, uh bjork um trying to think <laughs> pig destroyer like, there's like there's like hardcore bands too that i wish like we could play with as well like that just don't make sense but <laughs> yeah i i could go on forever with that but yeah like typo negative would be sick um kitty would be sick Rammstein would be sick sick like I, endless possibilities man yeah that'd be dope see it, that'd be one of those situations where if you could like land on a danny wimmer festival or something like that where all those bands are playing that would so, be so dope maybe not blue ridge but like maybe rockville yeah for sure so something you said earlier to paraphrase, you said with the first batch of songs that you've put out, it was about finding your musical identity from a sonic perspective. And now with the songs that are about to come out this year, it's about expanding that identity and kind of just embracing what you guys are about. So for fans who either just haven't really thought about it or people who are just discovering you, how would you define what Mirror Cell is as a sound like a sonic identity yeah that's a really good question also like a really deep question i would say like mirror cell sounds like i mean i guess with our aesthetic it sounds like you're entering like the matrix like you're in this this sci-fi world at least now i would say like because i i have ideas that will evolve our image and our sound like over time but at this very moment i would say we're a very like dystopic sounding like band um, that has like a lot of electronical elements uh, as well as like heavy and hardcore style elements. Um, and I would say that like, at least like on like an emotional level, level uh, Mirror Cell is just a band that isn't afraid to explore like I guess like the darker side of things um, as well as like the lighter side of things. And I feel like our music really 
tries to convey um like the dark and light of like situations and we really try to add like a really like futuristic like sound to our aesthetic and then I don't know I'm probably answering this like way too deep but I would just say like if if you're if you're into like sci-fi horror if you're into sci-fi stuff in general if you're into y2k fashion if you're into vogue fashion leather like it doesn't matter what it is like I feel like mirror cell it just has a little bit of something for everybody yeah I think I mean it's your band but I I think as a fan that's that's a good way to describe it because yeah go on uh i was just gonna say like you guys already have so many different musical sides to you even you only have like a handful of songs out now but there's they all sound so different from each other but looking at like photos of you guys there's a lot of like fashion inspirations that come from it as well that people who listen to that like really heavy music might not have put together right yeah and i think to to kind of like rephrase my question it's like i can sit here and i can say like oh this is what mirror cell is to me but it doesn't really matter what it is to me i think it matters to the listener like whatever you interpret our band as whether it be something aesthetically or fashion like you said or it's something really deep and metaphorical to you when it comes to like our lyrics and our sound and everything like that's that's what's most important so i hate to like kind of give <laughs> type of answer but it's like whatever you like you, you just have to discover it yourself like go listen to our our project go listen to our, our music and f find what mirror cell means to you like from listening to it and seeing us that's a good way to put it one of my favorite bands is afi and davy havoc writes his lyrics that way specifically to like not get his songs don't really have a specific meaning it's kind of up to interpretation so it kind of sounds like you guys take that same approach which i as a listener and as a fan i think is really cool i just think that's like the best style of like at least in my personal opinion like the bands that i gravitate towards are bands like afi and stuff where it's like they leave a lot of interpretation up for you like you know what their band is about you know what they do mm -hmm. but when you listen to their music you get like your own sense of purpose within like listening to them that you can apply to yourself and be like yeah this is what afi is to me or this is what mirror cell is to me mm -hmm. so i feel like everyone has a different answer for like what a certain band like means to them so i think if that's the case like then like that's the best like if everyone has the same opinion about your band then you know it's i i like that like art can be perceived in different forms uh, from people and that's what i want mirror cell to be is just a big like just boiling pot of different art and expression and whatnot for people that's dope um well to close things off i have a speed round as always but it's a little bit different i have a horror centric speed round because we're both big horror fans i did this one other time in another interview with uh my homie akuno heavy um i got i got five questions and they're all horror based um and you can just say whatever comes to mind uh favorite slasher Ooh, <laughs> of course it's a speed round so i feel very on the spot uh, <laughs> well i said it earlier before we uh started filming but texas chainsaw i mean i have leather face on my hand for a reason so favorite universal monster hmm bride of frankenstein or dracula i respect it <laughs> Um, favorite paranormal movie? Hmm, that's tough because I'm not the biggest paranormal movie guy, but... Me neither. Oh, wow, that's really tough. Because I'm going to think of something that is immediately better, like, as soon as this is over. But <laughs> first two that come to mind uh, would be the original Omen. Mm. and uh a movie that i actually watched recently that i was pleasantly surprised with called eli um it's on netflix really sick i don't think i've seen that i liked did, it, I it did it good. just did it just come out this past year yes oh and you know what actually i take it back i take it back I take it both <laughs> back. um there's there's this uh found footage style movie called uh haunted asylum ganjam i think i'm probably butchering that 
Mm -hmm. I love that movie. It was so (laughs) good. It's so creepy. Um, But that one would probably be my answer. Um, Your favorite horror subgenre? Ooh, horror subgenre. Um, Cosmic horror? I dig it. (laughs) Um, And the last one. The the horror movie that left the biggest impression on you. Oh shit. <laughs> biggest impression. Um oh I mean Evil Dead. I mean come on. <clears throat> <That's Three. fair. laughs> uh, damn. That's really tough. Um yeah, I mean my answers would I mean obviously like the big three, because like watching those movies as a young kid like left a huge impression on me. Same with like even like other stuff that are kind of horror adjacent, like Terminator and Terminator two. Um, but yeah, horror movie left the biggest impression on me would probably be the evil dead franchise, the scream franchise. But more recently, um, I, uh, really, really liked, uh, this movie called the sadness. Mm. Uh, it's insane. It's just an insane movie. I don't know how to explain it. It's really gory. It's really fucked up, but um yeah i guess that would be my answer between like it's so hard to pick that like (laughs) yeah i i have a hard time answering that myself because like you could go with the first one you watched and for me that was jaws but insane that was a good answer (laughs) but like the one that turned me into like a hardcore horror fan was dracula but then but then there's scream then there's the exorcist and there's gremlins like it it's an easy rabbit hole to go down and on the on the subject of new movies i have to ask this just because have you seen when evil lurks yes dude okay yes <laughs> yeah i take it back i love the sadness it was amazing <laughs> that movie was fucking crazy <laughs> Well, on that note, that was everything I had for you for this round. I'm sure we'll be talking again more in the future, whether it's on or off camera. So um, with that, was there any closing message to any Mirror Cell fans watching? Yeah, uh, thank you if you are watching. Um, and we we drop a new song. It's called Dissolve. It comes out on the night. That's in like, today's the fourth, so in a couple of days. Um, I would say it's one of our most interesting approaches to music yet. And I feel like the video that's going to be coming out with it is going to be super cool, super interesting. Worked with a really talented um, guy um, who I won't name yet, but um, yeah, it's, it's got everything. If you're, if you're into horror, you'll like it. If you're into music in general, you'll like it. It's just a, it's really cool single. So I'm excited to drop it. Sweet. Well, thank you to everybody for watching, and until the next interview, stay tuned, stay scared, and I'll catch you later.